What's up, guys, and welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, here with my review for the 2021 film No Time to Die. So, for this particular review, um, I'm going to start it off with the usual spoiler alert that the review is going to have spoilers just because of the content presented in the film and some of the events that happened. One that's kind of irrelevant to the overall plot, but was a very good or probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie and then another plot as far as a, a character that was introduced probably about halfway through the film based on just my general estimate of timing for the film but i kind of while i wanted more out of that character it's an interesting um transition that they presented into in this film um, and then, it, of course, with the ending of the film, that's the biggest spoiler of all. So I will say that if you have not seen the film and you don't want to be spoiled, then definitely watch the film first and then listen to this review. If you don't care about spoilers and you want to get my overall take on what was good and bad about the film, then, of course, by all means, listen in and watch the film. Um, I will start off uh, right off the bat and say that um, overall, I did enjoy the film. So, so as far as grading the film, I want I would want to give it a grade of about a B plus A minus. It wasn't the better of the Daniel Craig films. I want I generally reserve that for um, Casino Royale, but I want to say it's probably the top three of his films. I want to say Casino Royale, the one right after, maybe. I want to say if it was Quantum of Solace, maybe. Um, basically, the follow-up, the whatever the film right after Casino Royale was, and then this one. Um, I want to say the one between the sequel to Casino Royale and this one was not the greatest one, but um, basically to jump into the actual review, the whatever whichever film introduced Blofeld. Um, which I want to say was a sequel to Casino Royale, um, might have been the one, but it's one of those things where this one probably is, actually I'm going to even revise what I just said and say this one, No Time to Die was probably, is probably the top two, and then the other film with Blofeld is probably the top three, um, or the top, in the top three just because the character was so well played by Christoph Waltz that it's um it's hard to not like that film so with that out of the way um the main reason why i take points away from this particular film is that it was a lot longer than or was much longer than prior much longer than prior james bond film by almost 15 minutes to the point where there were points where it felt like a lot of stuff was dragging on in the final um, sequence of the film, you have um, James Bond opening the basically the, the submarine bay doors. The bad guy closes them and then Bond has to go back and reopen them. So that felt kind of silly to me. And then there were enough, um, I don't know, a lot of long, a lot of scenes that looks I felt like they took a lot of time to develop and that didn't need to be developed, I guess. But it's going to take another rewatching to see if there is stuff that could have been cut and wasn't, um, or if it, or if it's going to be one of those things that actually grows on me and it is actually a lot better than I expected and thought this first time through. Um, so f beyond that, as far as this being the grand opus of, or the grand final opus of Daniel Craig as James Bond, I thought uh, it was actually pretty good as far as that goes, but if you, but you have to think about it less of a Daniel Craig is retiring from the James Bond character and think of it more as passing the torch onto the next James Bond character, which I thought they actually handled very well in uh, that they did introduce who I'm going to assume is going to be the next James Bond in the female character. Um, I actually didn't make note of her name, but I actually thought she as the first time out and having her be a character that's kind of passing the torch, getting a feel for the character and all of that actually felt pretty good. So I actually, so I really now want to 
see her take the or see what her first role is going to be as far as um taking on the mantle of james bond see um see what her basically what her character was doing in the time that james bond was in retirement and off the grid during the time of no time to die i don't necessarily want to see them um you know, connect the dots between the last James Bond film and No Time to Die. But I, I want to see, I mean, I don't really necessarily want to see all the politics and internal struggle only, but I want to see, just like Dan, just like what they did with Daniel Craig, I want to see her rise into the role, how she was chosen, uh, picked, what her trials and tribulations were, a little bit of her backstory, but not necessarily a full film. Even though they did that with Daniel Craig, they could potentially also do that with her in, in the over the course of what she was during doing during the time of James Bond's retirement. Um, even though they do potentially only show her as rising through the ranks of MI6 or proving her worth or what it basically essentially just a film of whatever she's been up to. So while they did while the focus of No Time to Die was Daniel Craig, I did like that they introduced her. They show that kind that friction between her and James Bond as far as Bond being the old 007 and then um this the new lady being the new 007. So all overall, I like that, and I like their interaction that the 007 moniker is just a number, but she does respect his, that he was the former 007, he wore it well, and there's a certain tradition that needs to be followed, and the actress's name is Lashana Lynch, who plays Nomi. So, in overall, I thought that was a particularly overall performance even though it was limited i liked it and it actually left me wanting more in the form of now i want to see how she's going to portray the role how she embodies it takes it to the next level or whatever level she brings to the character i want to see how um she takes the 007 role and makes it her own just like D Daniel Craig did it with his just like Pierce Brosnan did with his version and all of that it doesn't necessarily have to be all the same jokes or all the same tech gadgets but I of course I want to see probably some not necessarily whether it's new stuff or old stuff I want to see how she takes on those jokes I like that she kind of made a I think it was only once or twice made at least once maybe twice about the subtle role of Daniel Craig's drinking habits so I was kind of hoping towards the end of the film when they are toasting Daniel Craig that she would make a you know a side comment after the fact of money penny or something along the lines of I can see why he drank these or whatever it was on the flip side it would have been hard to make an appropriate joke in that moment but it would have been, it could have been something along the lines of an inside joke between her and money penny about bond's drinking habits um she doesn't necessarily have to drink as much as bond did or and even have a martini that's shaken not stirred but they could potentially develop that habit over the course of the either the first film or the second film as far as why she chooses not to drink it drink that as much as he did or she doesn't have that much more that much of a necessity to drink so in general if i was to like i said if i was to grade this film i give it about a b plus to an a minus there was as far as so think like i said thinking thinking of it less as a, as a daniel craig retirement film thinking of it more as a as um passing the torch on from one iteration of 007 to another makes it better they've kind of been hinting at it that craig's that actually james bond as far as daniel craig goes has been getting older um it's harder for him to um to do the job i mean with all the, with the failing of the uh, fitness test in one of the films um and those kinds of things and then wanting to have various tech gadgets and all of that him being a relic of a particular age um made sense and in, the, in this film they brought it they i felt like they made a subtle nod to portray that that 
James Bond in the, this form as Daniel Craig is getting older. So, um, he, it is it is potentially time to retire, and he has retired a couple of times now. So, it's good to see this kind of film take on those kinds of roles over just saying I'm out, see you later. So this actually made me want to go back and see, make or makes me want to go back and see Pierce Brosnan's final James Bond role to see how they handle that. Um, I don't know that they've previously really made any um, nods to the characters being changed. They just, they just make the change and that's that. Mostly just because it feels like it's one of those things where it's never necessarily been... Um, a thing thing that they do they just say okay here's your new james bond and he's gonna take on and you're gonna see the this new character play the role so seeing it done this way is actually kind of refreshing to acknowledge whether even though it's kind of subtle and not outwardly mentioned but at least it's nice to see that they're making that in movie change to say that he, this is gonna be a new 007 this is who we've picked and not necessarily to say get over it, but um, this is who is going to be in this new character, this new person is going to take on the role in the way she sees. That's going to work best for her, not how the prior character has taken on that role. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, um, did you like the film, not like the film? Um, what would you have wanted to see, not wanted to see? Did you like Rami, Rami Malek as the uh, main villain in the, in the movie? Um, did you, how do you think he stands up to other villains and all of that? Then let me know. You can find me. You can comment on this post on the on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is HeadphonesNeil.Reviews for all content, subscription links, and all of that good stuff. Um, as far as my take on Rami Malek as the villain, I actually thought in general he was pretty good, but he was underdeveloped. So I actually wanted to see a little bit more. They kind of tried to play off his character with as a comparing and contrasting to Madeline. Um, so that so I guess it was enough on that front, but I wanted to see have more of him. But they continued with the usual trope of the of not necessarily Bond villains, but villains in general, as far as um, talking a lot, especially in that final scene with Bond. So that was okay, I guess. Um, but I actually thought the best scene in the film was between Bond and Blofeld in um, the jail cell with um, Blofeld continuing to taunt Bond that of what's of basically them going back and forth that they're now essentially the same and bond is there to help him while bond says that he's doing what he needs to do for the safety of people and all of that stuff but and i'm by no means doing that scene justice but when you if you haven't seen the film and you do watch it i thought of, i mean of course the portrayal by christoph waltz in that character and role is probably is one of his best performances in my opinion but he generally plays those kinds of roles very well so i want to say that was definitely the highlight of the film and of course there's the usual stuff that um that you've come to expect with the james bond character and roles so the you expect him to say at some point in the movie that he's bond james bond he's gonna order a martini that's shaken not stirred I like his interactions with Q and then the, the new 007 um, as far as um, who's who and then the of, of the of course the other favorite side conversation between the new 007 and Money Penny that when Money Penny tells her that everyone's wanted to shoot Bond at least once so little things like that made the movie particularly good so that's why i'm giving it a higher grade than i probably otherwise would have and i mean granted at this point it's one of those things where if you apply the a video game uh filter to it that it a lot of what you see in james bond doesn't really make sense unless you've seen other james bond films oh standing on this like watching this film on its own you would think you, you a lot of references would be missed by not 
having seen the, seen any of the other James Bond films, but it only really re but the, what they what I like what they did with this particular iteration is that they kind of, with Daniel Craig with from the first film at least they given it a starting point where you really only have to watch his um his films so that way you don't necessarily have to watch all you know 35 million James Bond films to understand what's going on but by watching um the daniel craig versions first and then watching the rest of them you kind of get a more a better build up as far as um all the various gadgets the tech the interactions the various m's which was also an interesting touch where they had a little hallway with the prior m's on the wall including judy dench and the guy from the old um james bond film so all in all a good film to watch and i kind of now want to go see it again outside of the scope of being a new new james bond film so um eventually we'll see or maybe when it comes to um streaming i'll watch it then just to see how the film holds up um at that time after a couple of months at least have gone by since the um film was released so that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, like I said, uh, get, definitely get in touch with me. Um, the Twitter again is at PatelN01. You can comment on this post on the Patreon by becoming a supporter at patreon.com slash PatelN01. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode and until next time.